so in the light of these uh, developments, please join me in welcoming Dr. Eric Bolander, founder of Walk World Foundation, who will enlighten us on the topic, the digital disruptive change in the educational industry. Ah, interesting. Mr. Bolander? Okay, oh, the microphone is working, thank you. In 2011, when um, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates met for the last time before um, Steve Jobs passed away that fall, they talked about the digital um, revolution that they had been so deeply involved in and how much things have changed over the time uh, in the industry by the Silicon um, Valley and the, and the, and, and the chip. Uh, the way we work in the office, the film industry, the music industry had had a major uh, impact on um, their lives and, and everyone else's lives. But they also agreed on one basic thing. Let's see if this works. Uh, they agreed upon that the education industry had been lacking behind and they're admitting their failures, uh, failure in not uh, revolutionized this industry uh, as much as they had done in, in other industries. Um, this has been a part of my journey, my, my personal journey into this um, business. I've been founding a company called Click Data in Sweden um, over 30 years ago, working on digital education, online training as it's called now today. Let's see if this works. And I've been also working on uh, a non-profit uh, project called World of Knowledge, which I will be talking a little bit about. Um, so it's a great honor for me to be here, of course. Let's see if this works. Where do I click? Can I have someone help me? Um, there you go. This is forward, this is backward. Now we go. So the notion of reminding about admitting their failure to reinvent the education industry through technology was, was a, a major part of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs' last meeting. So, let's begin with that we are living in a 140 character, um, let's see where, um, uh, uh, we all live in a, in a 140 character by digital online world. This is both good and it is bad. And it is technology that made us so. Um, technology has revolutionized the way we live our lives from shopping to banking to socializing to learning. And can you please help me with this um, screen there? Um, it's a revolution from shopping to banking to um, everything basically around our lives. So I'm here to talk about the revolution in, in learning. in online learning. How it has transformed the classroom. And how it has impacted education. And where it's likely to go in the future. Today, 
students. Uh, today's students have evolved into wonderful bugs. They are just watching a, a young person's fingers fly across a tablet, computer, cell phone as they search for information. It's, fa it's fascinating uh, to watch because they're glued to the screen intending on finding what they're looking for. It's the curiosity that drives them. But then, if you, if you, look, at the, if you look at the past, today everything is on the phone. It was not like that when we were younger, when I, in my generation, were younger. We didn't have that access to everything here. So the phone is a smartphone today, but is it really? Well, let's talk about that later. So we all use the internet for looking up words, finding, finding a, <laughs> a, now it works here. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that, technically. So we use the internet to look up words, restaurants and theaters, watch instructional videos, tap into database, send important files, etc. And millennials are the first generation to grow up with this technology in their hands. And they have assimilated it. much more than uh, uh, my generation did. We had to learn it when we were grown-ups. I don't know about the battery for, the, for this clicker, but... <laughs> so, young people already understand the basic platform and, and will quickly turn the chaos into order within minutes, making the rest of us older people uh, look stupid. Um, so they turn uh, the chaos into order and let us other fields, uh, feel a little bit stupid about it. <laughs> I'm not going to be stressed about this clicker, I promise. So they are actually living in the digital world and this vast information source that used to be the library now is on YouTube and on LinkedIn, uh, sorry, on, on, on Wikipedia basically, the two main sources for information today. So. Everything cannot be taught uh, uh, in, in, on the internet, but most of it has some, some, uh, some uh, um, videos online. So we are living in the age of, of technology for sure. So the result of this is that online learning has become a natural extension of who we are. I don't know if it's slow or if it's working. So we're, we're carrying our classroom in our hands. On the internet, there's a lot of online sources for, for courses. Of course, as you well know, the Khan Academy is, is one of the most famous, Udemy, Coursera, edX, and more. And through innovation, Testing and student engagement, online learning now holds a prominent posi position as a qualified affiliate learning platform. But one thing for me personally that I 
want to address here is that validation of knowledge is not the same as access to information. Wikipedia always claim that they have access to knowledge. No, in my opinion, they, it's access to information, not access to knowledge, because that's a little bit different. I'm going to talk a little bit about the evolution of online learning and where it all started. In the 1960s, the University of uh, Illinois, here we are, uh, created uh, an intranet, uh, which, uh, which was a system of linked computer terminals that allowed students to access course materials as well as listening to re recorded lectures. This was of, uh, first official online learning opportunities. Then in 1962, uh, J.R. Licklider from MIT created a galactic network concept that eventually became known as the internet. And with that, our world as we know changed forever. In the 1980s, the distant learning became more important. College jumped on to the bandwagon and uh, began to transform their course catalogs by offering online courses. During this time, the internet teach um, reached Europe and Asia and the infrastructure was laid down for the internet to become faster and more affecting, opening up for commercial and popular use. Moving on to the uh, 90s, Linus Thornwald created Linus, the leading mode uh, of open source software, which became a necessary component of many online uh, learning platforms. And then in 1991, uh, uh, World Wide Web, web uh, paid way for, uh, for the internet, uh, the way we used, use it today, of course. And it was also during this time uh, period uh, that the first accredited fully online college emerged, as well as LMS, Learning Management System, was coined as a uh, term everybody used. And in 1998, Google uh, search engine was developed, um, giving virtually everyone the ability to find what they wanted to know, looking for in the numbers of seconds. It's hard to imagine uh, to going back to the, the, the pre-days of, of, of Google. So internet became the go-to go go place for exploration, entertainment, and learning. Uh, quickly, businesses and information sources shifted to online um, uh, formats and it became essential for everyone selling a product or service to have a website as well as a digital social profile. By this time, dozens of colleges, colleges not only offered online courses, but online deg degrees. And um, free and open online education was available to everyone. And for instance, in 2001, uh, Wikipedia was uh, launched. Can you imagine a world without Wikipedia? Because I can't. And I have been putting 10 years of my life to develop it further. Later on, I will tell you a little bit more about that. In 2002, MIT um, launched a um, open source, open courseware project offering free educational resources. And then in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg and his friends at Harvard developed Facebook, the social network. And you can also see Facebook as a social network system um, as it has proven to be a tremendous source of information as people share their favorite learning sources with family and friends. So the revolution continued. When YouTube was launched in 2005, it became 
the landmark change for online video training because up to this point CD-ROM was the main transportation uh, for video-based material. Um, and we did a lot of video-based uh, training on CD-ROM and prior to this on VHS in uh, click data when um, uh, uh, in the beginning of our uh, history and journey. So I know a lot about that for sure. And in 2009, you can go back, uh, or is this automatically? Yeah. In 2009, um, YouTube Edu was launched, becoming one of the main sources of online education and instruction. Uh, the result of this explosion of technology is, uh, is that it has now been widely accepted the online learning has opened up the door for new and innovative learning opportunities to more people than ever. This allows people to research, connect, learn and grow at their own terms. And by doing so, um, bypass many of the obstacles presented by traditional learning formats. And while the advent of online learning may not completely replace the traditional classroom learning experience. Of course, you know all that, who, who worked in this industry. It has certainly revolutionized how we teach, learn, and approach the pursuit of languages. So we all know that people, um, learn differently. Some will, will do it with, by visual, some are more into listening, while others are tactile learners. They have to feel, touch, and, 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 and do stuff to, to learn and to gather the, the knowledge. Well, through technology, people now have easy access to the type of learning format and suits them the best. No longer must they sit coupled up in a classroom. No longer must teacher be restricted to lectures. Um, books or explaining physical objects in the, in the lessons. So we have expanding our educational powers by the digital tools. In fact, even the traditional image of students hang out in the dorm rooms, study halls or lecture halls to engage with other students um, has been replaced with video chats, on online discussion, uh, posts, etc. So it has dramatically changed the way we be, the behave and uh, use technology in the education sector. So today online education offers a variety variety of media platforms that deliver text, audio, images, animation, and streaming video. Ours is one of them, of course, but there's lots of others. All available on, at their computer, tablet, or mobile phone. And blended learning uh, is becoming uh, more and more popular, where the student can blend in-person classroom work with online coursework, uh, coursework making the best out of two worlds. Consider some of the factors fueling the growth in online education. They include popularity of distance learning, flexi flexibility in scheduling uh, for both students and teachers, reduced costs, um, range of synonymous and asynchronous opportunities, access to expertise, networking opportunities, conductive government policies, and growth of IT security and cloud-based solutions, and also uh, growth of entrepreneurs like myself who can uh, earn passive income of offering their skills at competitive prices by having classrooms online for their skill set. So, 
Online Learning offers hundreds of thousands of learning formats, lectures, seminars, workshops, tutorials, all from the comfort of one's home or wherever you are. You might even take a course right now when, while I'm speaking, who knows. And uh, Let's see, next slide, there you go. It increased retention by 25 to 60% over classroom work. So online education is not just a fad, it's actually our return on investment. So what lies ahead? Well, computers in the field is already fierce and will become even fiercer. Fiercer? Fiercer. Well, I had to practice that word again. Um, this will drive more creativity and innovation to this industry, ed tech industry as we call it, but could also slow development as market becomes more saturated. We're not really there yet. Um, Reports show that the future of online education demand is be mobile friendly, be a good value, or even free, offer career and academic services, and um, be incre increasingly di diverse, offering student-centered strategies, gaming opportunities, etc. Et so. Moving on to the next slide. Um, the global on online education market is projected to witness a compound annual growth rate of about 10% uh, to reach a global uh, market size of around 286 billion by the, uh, dollars by the year 2023. So this is a major industry already and has been for quite some time. Some of the key players is listed here. Uh, Lynda.com is um, uh, bought by uh, Microsoft and uh, through LinkedIn. So there is an educational part in LinkedIn. Um, there are several others, of course. So online learning offers opportunities from preschool age to colleges. Uh, move on the slides here. Offers the greatest flexibility for both students and the teachers. Uh, offers a variety of formats, a uh, myriad of courses, and giving the student greater uh, choice. So, where have I been um, uh, in this industry? Well, online education is here to stay for sure, but where have I been? Well, I've been working with this for almost three decades now. And it all started uh, back in 1992 when I was uh, younger. Um, and we, uh, you can see this slide, it doesn't show well on the screen, but we made video tutorials in Sweden and we that, did that uh, quite well over the years. Um, uh, and one, one video tutorial was introduction to internet, explaining how the internet worked for uh, the Swedes. Uh, it had a sales record of 435,000 copies in a country where 8 million speak Swedish. So that was a great success for us. But we moved on and took the digital transformation because there were no online, there were no World Wide Web, uh, fast enough to transport video. And we believed in the, in the teacher teaching something in front of, of, of the camera uh, and not just being technology because we think uh, knowledge is transfor transformed from a teacher's heart and mind to the, to the teacher. So we, we believe in the, in the presence of a teacher but we took it uh, by video tutorials in, into the school, uh, into the um, uh, technology by VHS, CDROM, and online training. Since 10 years, I've been working more global than just local in Sweden for the business to business area on a project called World of Knowledge. It's basically an 
extension of our, what I've been doing in, in this industry, but it's uh, taking uh, the ambition to create the knowledge network in comparison to the social network. Next slide, please. So, I've been writing a book about it. It's not published yet, but it's uh, in the end of the product of writing the book. Um, basically, this is a, 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 the uh, intersection between knowledge, social media, gamification, and Wikipedia. If you mix all these things, you end up with a lot of great new stuff that we think is good. So explaining the main app, Wikimaster, Wikimaster takes the full use of Wikipedia. It's a great Wikipedia app. You, you can use it as a Wikipedia app. But it adds the flavor of multiple choice questions in our database called World of Knowledge. So the multiple choice questions and the Wikipedia articles are mixed in this app called Wikimaster. It's free and you can download it and it has good reviews. So we put quizzes on, on Wikipedia. We put national tests on Wikipedia. We have 500,000 multiple choice questions created by our community, just like Wikipedia is created by the community of uh, Wikimedians creating articles. We create, back please, we create, um, can you please turn it back or did I, yes, thank you. We create multiple short questions on, on the top of, of the articles and we put the national exams, multiple choice questions into the system as well. So this central, this is a central, uh, back, back, I'm still on the, on the slides. This is a central thing for, for understanding. Data to wisdom. Okay, data is the ones and zeros that the computers understand, but we as humans doesn't understand. It's ones and zeros. Once ones and zeros are developed into information, we can, as humans, understand and learn it and get it. If we have access to information, like we have going to a Wikipedia page, we then put the information into our heads. And when it's information is in our heads, we don't need to Google it. We know things. And that's very good, because the more we know, the more likelihood we are to get insights. Uh -huh. That's how history develops. So that's why uh, that and that country has, uh, has uh, their culture, because of their history. We can draw conclusions, insights. And once you become a little bit older and are in the second half, just like me, we, we become wise. Okay? We, we get wisdom. So this is, this is a central thing. So Wiki Master is access, not access to information, it's it's a tool to learn. So, in, from our perspective, we develop Wikipedia into the next thing. We're trying to build a school on top of it. Wikiflip, it's the smaller uh, sibling. It's like Instagram. If this is Facebook, this is Instagram. Basically, we took the questions that we have added uh, images to from the Wikipedia database called Wikimedia Commons. And then you can flip things. So, if you're uh, students has a homework of, let's say, photosynthesis or French Revolution. They can search for French Revolution as a Wikipedia article and then they can take the questions by flipping images from this learning. When they, when they don't know when Robert Speer died, they can click on the Robert Speer article and learn more about him. So, this is the two apps we have. So basically what we have done is put sugar and milk into the coffee. So if Wikipedia is the coffee, we have put sugar and milk and we are trying to, to create a Starbucks on top of the coffee. Starbucks for students, if you like. Mr. Bollinger, so we, we need to wrap up. We're, we're wrapping? So I'm, I'm going to wrap and just say this is what we have done, the, the uh, Walk Academy. And um, I will end with a quote. I think I'm on the last slide. Can you put the ne next slide? Okay, next slide. Anyway, 
Um, going from information to, to um, well, I had a great quote from, from uh, Steve Jobs. Here it is. The most important thing is a person, a person who incites your curiosity and feeds your curiosity. And machines cannot do the same the way people can. The element of discovery is all around you, so you don't need a computer. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.